Hello Internet, nice to see you! You may have noticed that in these videos I'm using tablature as opposed to standard notation to communicate what to play on your instrument. After all, this channel is called Music Theory for Guitar, so I want everything I do to be guitar friendly. Now, there are a number of people who say that standard notation is strictly superior to tablature and tablature should not be used, or that professional don't use tablature. I'm gonna answer this specific thing about professional don't use tablature later. What I want to talk about right now is why, in my opinion, tablature is here to stay and why tablature has in fact some advantage over standard notation and nobody should be ashamed of using it. A lot of the things that follows are my opinion and you are completely, absolutely free to disagree. But before we get to that, let me show you one thing. Now, why am I showing you this? I'm gonna tell you later. Now, let's be clear on one thing. I think tablature is good and it's here to stay. I also think the standard notation is good and it's here to stay. I don't think one is better than the other. I think they are two different notations that do different things. For instance, tablature is much more convenient to communicate new concepts to a guitar player because tablature allows you to communicate exactly the fingering and the position of the music to play. For instance, if I were to play a D major chord and play those notes in standard notation, I would have at least those five different positions on the guitar. So the problem of using standard notation to communicate with a guitar player is that the relationship between the representation of the notes in standard notation and the possible realization on the guitar are not one-to-one. -one. Those very same symbol here can mean any of those here. Or to give a nod to all the mathematicians, physicists, engineers in my audience, the function that goes from the standard notation to what you play on the guitar, it's not injective. This is not a problem on piano or in most other instruments. On piano, there is only one way to play this chord and while the fingering can change, once you indicate what note you want, there is only one key playing that note. You don't have to choose your position. So whenever we show an exercise or a concept to a guitar player, I think tablature is superior because it takes away a whole layering of thinking that the guitar player should do. I'm not saying you guys should not learn to read standard notation and learn how to make these kinds of decisions in real time, I'm just saying that it's easier. Now, tablature, of course, has also a fundamental weakness, but I want to make it clear immediately. Tablature cannot really notate the rhythm of the notes. Okay, there have been people who have tried to create a rhythm notation for tablature, there has been more than one proposal, but the fact is, none of those is ideal. Standard notation is definitely superior in notating rhythms. This is why, if you're using tablature to learn a song, you should have a record of that song available to you and refer to it quite often, so that you can be sure that you are learning the song with the right rhythm. Another thing, tablature seems to be better to indicate phrasing elements such as slide, vibrato, hammer on, pull off, I'm not saying those things cannot be notated in standard notation. They can. It's just that usually they are not notated. And so those elements are left to the taste of the person reading. 
While, again, if we are trying to communicate with a guitar player, tablature excel in making clear exactly how we are playing a specific piece, as opposed to just what notes we are playing. Now, if you have been learning using standard notation, this seems to fly in the face of everything they taught you. After all, in standard notation, you have those notes, those notes must be played, period. Standard notation tells you, again, in theory, exactly what you have to play. But as it turns out, this is a misconception. Only in more modern music, if you want, standard notation is supposed to be played exactly as it is. Let me give you an example of what I mean here, because it's really interesting to see. Let's take Corelli Violin Sonata Opus 5. Those sonatas are notated in a very interesting way. Here we have the accompaniment part. No real mystery here. Here we have the standard notation for the melody played by the violin. Above here we have how Corelli actually played played what was written below. There is good evidence that this realization here has been approved by Corelli himself. Now, as you see above here, those note values don't even sum to the total of the bar. There are simply too many notes. But that's how Corelli was playing over it. So, as we can see, the violin part written here, which is, if you want, the official one, it's just a skeleton over which the violin player is supposed to improvise the melody played. As you can see, this is light years away from the story they tell you that standard notation is meant to be played exactly as written. Now, of course, this depends on when the standard notation was played. In the Baroque era, this kind of thing was really common. But later, in the Classical and Romantic era, on the other hand, composers want you to play their music exactly as written. So you see, this is a bit more complex than just thinking standard notation is supposed to be played exactly as written. There is also another misconception that we want to clear here, and it shows that tablature are actually more interesting and valuable than it appears at first sight. Many people think that standard notation is the traditional way of notating music, and then tablature are a modern invention made for guitar players because we are not able to read music, and so it's kind of a worthless way of notating music. But as it turns out, we do have an important historical precedent. So let me introduce to a lost and recovered family of instruments, the viola da gamba family. Those instruments can have six or seven strings, they are bowed, and their tuning is very similar to the tuning of a guitar. Viola da gambas were really popular in the Baroque era, and then we simply forgot about them and they were not used anymore during the Classical and Romantic era. Until a few musicians, most notably Jordi Saval, recovered them and they relearned the whole repertoire, learned to play them again, and made us listen to all this wonderful music that was simply forgot. So, why am I telling you all this? Because all the music written for Viola da Gambas was in tablature. Oh yes, the tablature was different than what we see today, and there was also a kind of rudimentary music notation. And as you can see here, the tablature is using letters rather than numbers to indicate what fret to play over the string, but those are unquestionably tablature. Music was written for the Viola da Gambas and was communicated to other people, and then we are able to recover this music today because we have those tablatures, because this music was never recorded in standard notation. My point here is that tablature can be really helpful to make an instrument more popular and to lower the access barrier to play this instrument. After all, viola da gambas were really popular at the time, especially among non-professional musicians. Pretty much like guitars today. Now, coming back at professionals don't use tablature, let me tell you one thing. Professional will use everything they can to get the job done. 
As a professional, you could be reading standard notation, tablature, chord notation, Nashville notation, Roman numerals, and a number of other less common notations, including the basso continuo notation, which is not really popular today. Depending on the gigs you get, the music you play, and what you want to do with the music in general, you can find that some notation are more or less convenient or more or less used for that specific kind of music. Standard notation is, yes, probably the most common notation used among professional musicians today, but by all means, it's not the only one. And tablatures can have a place also in the life of a professional musician. I know several professional musicians who either never learn to read standard notation or they are so out of practice with it that it's like they never learn it anyway, but they're still doing an admirable job at what they're doing because they are using either other notation or they are simply not needing notation for what they are doing. The thing is this, though. We don't have to choose. We can use both standard notation and tablature. We can all be friends. For instance, in my courses, I use both standard notation and tablature. This is a page from my course Complete Chord Mastery. As you see, there is both standard notation and tablature so that you can see exactly thanks to the tablature, how I'm playing those chord progressions, but with standard notation, if you are a piano player or somebody else, you can also read this and play it on a different instrument and see what's going on there. You can use the notation you are more comfortable with. And in some other situation, when appropriate, for instance here, I also use chord diagrams to show how those chords look like on the fretboard, because many people are visual and prefer to see those chords notated this way. Again, we don't have to choose. We can get the best of both words. We can get the best of all words. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not tell you when I put up a new video. And if you have any questions or you just want to tell me how much you hate tablature, just write it down in the comments. I always read all my comments and I welcome everybody's opinion. This is Tommaso Zilio of MusicTheoryForGuitar.com. And until next time, enjoy.